Miguel Angel Felix Gerardo, nicknamed Jefe de Jefes, which translates to Bosses of Bosses, is one of the crime bosses least talked about. Despite the lack of infamy, he is one of the most influential drug lords of all time. You might be wondering why that's so. Well, we'll be taking a deep dive into the crimes and atrocities committed by this drug lord and kingpin, so stay tuned to find out more about Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo. Gallardo's Beginnings Gallardo is the pioneer of the modern drug trade and one of the most influential drug cartel bosses in history. He played a significant role in establishing the modern Mexican drug trade. Like most drug cartel kingpins, Gallardo had to start small as he lacked resources. He was known to come from a low-income family and didn't have connections and links to jumpstart his drug trade, and therefore had to go through many leaps and bounds to get to where he is today. Miguel started from next to nothing, and was born on January 8, 1946 on the outskirts of Culiacan, Sinaloa. He had a normal upbringing, graduated from high school, and studied business. At the age of 17, Gallardo started his profession on the right side of the law, and decided to become a law enforcement agent in the Mexican Federal Judicial Police. Miguel then went on to work as a bodyguard for the governor of the state of Sinaloa. It was access to the many political connections that the governor had that led to Gallardo jumping into the illegal drug trafficking trade world, and eventually formed the Guadalajara Cartel. The Guadalajara Cartel is formed. The cartel was led by Gallardo and two of his close associates by Ernesto and Rafael. Gallardo was directly responsible for corrupting many state officials and involving them in the drug trade through the connections developed through that of the governors. Ernesto and Rafael are supposed to have worked in a drug cartel by a kingpin named Pedro, which they then took over after he was supposedly shot to death by the Mexican Federal Judicial Police. The Mexican Federal Judicial Police established a top-secret undercover mission known as Project Condor to take down many drug traffickers and their drug trafficking routes to reduce illegal drug trade through Mexico. To, to fire back at this attempt to decrease the drug trade, many drug traffickers started to settle down in Sinaloa State. They worked in conjunction with the Guadalajara Cartel. This regrouping occurred somewhere between 1970 and 1990, which resulted in the formation of what's known as the Guadalajara Cartel. Gallardo was already indicted in 1971 for working with the cartel, and was on the run from law enforcement agencies. He meticulously worked on the drug trafficking side to develop what officials considered the most significant drug trade in Mexico's history. The Guadalajara Cartel grew pretty quickly, and it went on to grow marijuana and formed weed plantations throughout Mexico, which grew substantially as time passed. Marijuana Plantations The marijuana plantations were set up in remote areas through Mexico in the mountainous regions because they were easy to hide and irrigation wasn't such a problem either. There was no significant reason to drill wells. But the cartel had to deal with a few issues, such as the low yield and quantity of weed derived from the plantations and variable weed quality. Not only that, transportation of the stockpiles of weeds was pretty expensive due to the plantations being located pretty far away. But things changed quickly as the cartel found an alternative solution to the plantation of weed. They came about a particular strain of marijuana seeds that were quickly cultivatable, which cannabis cultivators specifically developed in the United States. The resulting cultivated marijuana was seedless and more potent than the older strains of marijuana planted in the mountains. The higher quality marijuana made their profits skyrocket, and they could make big margins on the illegal trade of marijuana. They took another step in the right direction by taking the initiative to bring the marijuana plantations into remote areas of the Mexican desert, which made transportation and trafficking costs go down substantially. With the new plantation location came new problems. The cartel had to pay massive bribes to install irrigation wells so that the plants grew adequately. They had to keep the areas of these remote cultivation sites a secret. They achieved this by going through the tedious process of making numerous bribes and through illicit activities, such as intimidation. The Colombian Cartel Once In Their tactics proved successful, but this wasn't the cartel's only source of income as the Colombian cocaine cartel started sprouting up in the 1980s. 
Due to increasing pressure by law enforcement agencies and the impending threat of crackdowns, the Colombian drug cartel had to change routes. Gallardo welcomed the Colombian drug cartel with open arms. And still, instead of accepting the offer of getting paid for the services of providing drug trafficking routes, Gallardo insisted on getting a 50% cut from all the cocaine that passed through his drug trafficking routes. This deal proved pretty beneficial for Gallardo, as he could reap a benefit of around $5 billion annually for the cartel. Under the leadership of Felix Gallardo, the Guadalajara cartel grew to new heights, and their influence spread throughout various regions of the United States, such as the states of California and Arizona. The protection services provided to the cartel were exclusively supplied by Gallardo through his various official and political connections. One of these protection services was provided by Mexican officials that worked at DFS, a Mexican intelligence agency. The DFS was headed by Miguel Nasajaro, who was supposedly corrupt due to his ties with the cartel. Several DFS members had direct connections to the drug cartel. It aided the cartel in various crimes, such as drug trafficking, providing complete protection, and going as far as carrying out murder missions through different death squads formed under the DFS. Enrique's Arrival In the 1980s, the United States Drug Enforcement Agency, known by the acronym of the DEA, sent over an agent by the name of Enrique to Mexico. Soon after making his way to the Guadalajara DEA base in Mexico, Enrique managed to weed out one of the marijuana plantations in Mexico, which was subsequently raided and destroyed by DEA agents. Later, he was able to track down another plantation that was much larger and under the protection of the DFS. Thousands of workers tended to the plantation. It was known to generate annual revenues of around $8 billion annually. Gallardo recognized Enrique as a threat, and he decided to stop him once and for all. Gallardo goes down. In 1989, Felix Gallardo was arrested, along with six corrupt police officials who aided the cartel. According to the DEA, the operation was executed cleanly without a single shot being fired. Gallardo was extradited to the U.S. and sentenced to around 40 years in prison under the charges of drug trafficking, racketeering, and many other violent crimes. After spending 27 years of his 40 years in prison, he was resentenced for the murder of DEA agent Enrique. Still, he denied having any involvement in the murder of Enrique. Surprisingly, all of this didn't stop Gallardo, as he operated the whole operation from his cell on his cell phone. He signed off his drug plantation to his lawyer, who handed out the cartel and divided it into smaller territories, assigning them to smaller known drug kingpins. And that's pretty much it for today's video. Make sure to leave some comments below if you have any questions, and tune in next time for more videos. See you later!